Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today we're going to be covering the next question from LeetCode. Question number four, which is the median of two sorted arrays. So given two sort sorted arrays numbers one and numbers two of size M and N respectively, they want you to find the median of these two sorted arrays and they want the overall runtime complexity should be uh, big O of log of N plus N. You may assume that um, each of these inputs are not empty. I'll give you an example, uh, one, one comma three and then two. And so mathematically what you do is you put the numbers all in ascending order and then take the middle number. Um, so we have one, two, three. And if that was one big uh, array, the middle number would be two because it's the literally in the middle of the array. Um, so that's what median is. If there's an even number, there is no like middle number because there's two middle numbers. So here would be one, two, three, four. So two and three would be technically in the middle of the array. So in, in the case where there, we have an even number of elements in the array, what you do is you take those two middle elements and average them, um, the mathematical mean of those two given numbers. So we do the average of two and three, which is two plus three is five divided by two, which is two and a half. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this into code. Honestly, I don't think this one qualifies for the rating of hard. It should, I don't know, whatever. But anyways, let's go ahead and just solve it. So first of all, let's, uh, we're gonna need to iterate through, um, through, this, through these numbers. So I'm gonna have a counter. Uh, Call, I'm going to call it total count and set it equal to the length um, of each of them added up. And then um, I'm going to use the shift operator in JavaScript. Um, what that does is it, um, you can see the documentation here. Um, given an array, if you call shift on it, It'll take the first number in there, store that in a variable, and, re and remove it from the array. So for in this, in this example, the first element is the number one. So it, the array now is only two and three, because we pulled out that first element. And if we log out the variable that we stored from the shift command, it stored that first variable that we deleted from the array. OK, so we're going to be using that. Because our two arrays are already sorted, um, they mean they're both sorted in the same direction. They kind of left that information out from the instructions, but it's implied. So since they're already sorted, we're going to take the first number of each of them and compare which one's bigger. And then, um, or sorry, which one's smaller. And the, the smaller one, we're going to pull out of either nums1 or num2, and then repeat the process until we have a, a giant array. Um, with uh, combined from nums1 and num2, uh, nums2. Um, it would just be the sorted order. We're essentially doing a sort. Uh, we're combining these two sorted arrays in a relatively efficient manner. So while um, we need some kind of counter, so let uh, count equal zero, while count is less than the total count. Um, so first off, we're going to check, um, if we're already at like the end of the array, are the, the, um, oh, I forgot to pull out an element from each of them. So we're going to say let a equals nums one dot shift and let b equals nums two dot shift. Okay, so now we're gonna check because um, if I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the dev tools. Um, when in doubt, always kind of test some of your just raw JavaScript skills um, or theories in this uh, dev tools so here. So like, suppose we have an empty array, and we um, let x equal empty array dot shift. 
you want to know what happens when you call that. So x is undefined in that case. So we need to handle that situation where we're calling shift on a, an empty array because that's going to be like kind of our base case. It's going to happen once um, if we're trying to pull data from an empty array. For example, um, I mean, they, they give us a condition that both the uh, inputs aren't empty, but we're, we're going to be emptying them anyways as we pull numbers out of them. So, uh, for example, if A or B only had one element, then the next time around we would one of them would be empty. Uh, one of those uh, nums one or num two would be empty. So let's go ahead and um, check for that condition. So if type of A equals undefined, then we're going to um, we want to store this um, combined sorted array in some variable. I'm just going to call it combined. Um, so it's just going to be a giant array. So if uh, a is undefined, or you can say equals equals null, either way, um, we're going to say combined dot push b. E. Since there's nothing in a, or there's nothing in the first uh, array, we're going to have to pull the value from the second array and put that into our overall resulting uh, giant sorted array. So that's why if A is undefined, we obviously have to go with the other value, which is B. So, uh, and then we say B equals nums 2 dot shift. So we're just pulling the new value into B. Otherwise, if, and we're just going to copy this. We're going to do the, the, oops, wrong button. We're going to do the opposite logic or converse or something. I don't know what it's called. But we're going to just sw swap A and B in the, this argument. Um, we could prob probably parameterize that now. Um, but for only two lines, it might not be worth it. Um, anyways, um, all right. So we handled the cases where either one of the two numbers that we pulled out of the arrays are empty or undefined. Um, all right. So what's remaining? So if a is less than b, we're going to uh, go with a, and then a equals nums dot shift. As I was saying, we could probably pull this these two lines into a function since we're repeating it on line seventeen and eighteen as well, but. We really don't have that much code for this exercise. So anyways, so otherwise we're going to use B if B is bigger, greater or equal to A. Uh, oh, I forgot to put nums one here. Nums two, that shift. And I made a typo here when I'm copying and pasting. Forgot to change that to nums one since we're pulling the letter a always from the nums one array and we're always pulling b from nums two array okay cool so that should handle um the sorting i just need to increment the counter after doing this count plus plus okay. so now we have uh handled making a merge of the two given arrays um so next we need to uh, take the middle number. So uh, the middle index is math floor of um, the combined array is length divided by two. So, for example, in the example they gave us. There's a length of four here, divided by two is two. The floor of two is two. So 
um, 0, 1, and 2. So that would end up, give us the number 3 here um, out of these. Um, it, would, it would point to the number 3 in the combined array. Um, so we really want that one and the one before it. So let's handle that in our code. So if um, we need to check if the length is odd or not. So if combine dot length um, modulo two and there we go modulo two is not equal to zero. Well, if it equals zero, that means it's even. Otherwise, it's odd. So even case. Um, so when it's even, we had a situation I was mentioning here. So we want to take that middle index and the one before that and average those two numbers that are at those given index indices. So we want to return combined at middle index plus combined middle index minus one and put some parentheses around there because we're going to divide by two. And then when it's odd, we simply, so for example, uh, at the top example, we would have one, two, three. Um, it's odd, so the middle index, according to our calculation, is uh, three halves, which is 1.5, and then we take the floor of that, so it's one, so the one index in the array one two three would be uh, would be pointing to the number two, um, so that correctly points us to the middle index when um, when we have an odd overall length of the combined array. So we just need to return the element that's from from that index. All right, we go ahead and run that code. And we have our solution. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and press the thumbs up and stay tuned. Um, one last thing, um, just a quick little uh, runtime analysis. So our sorting, um, we literally just did a set number of calculations for every element in each of the array each of the arrays um, and the uh, array sizes were m and n so that was a uh, big o of m plus n and then we just did a single calculation at the end however there were some uh, utility functions we use in here like math.floor um, modular arithmetic should also be constant runtime so that shouldn't impact anything um, might be able to figure out a way to do it without math.floor, which maybe would possibly enhance the runtime a tiny bit. Uh, I'm not really sure what the runtime of math.floor is, but uh, I would assume it's not that computationally in intensive. Um, but sometimes some of these library functions do have like a hidden gotcha that they take up more runtime than expected. and um, I really try not to worry too much about that unless it proves to be a problem in like some kind of test case that you're running. So I would just go ahead and stick with the solution. It's nice and simple. It's a pretty good runtime. It's uh, I don't go by these percentages like the 90% and I just kind of know that it's either good or it's bad or somewhere in between. But yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, see you guys next week.